Hi everyone, my name is Emmy Klein and I am the resident artist here at Jerry's Artorama as well as the host of Jerry's Live. Today I wanted to talk to you about some basic drawing techniques. So the first thing I've done is transferred my drawing down onto my paper using the grid technique. Now the paper I'm using is the Soho Bristol because it has a very smooth surface so it doesn't show a whole lot of texture uh, as I lay my graphite down. Uh, now the pencils I'm using are the Cezanne graphite in 12B. So let's talk about pencils kind of in general. There are varying grades to the pencil leads and it goes from H to B. Now, I usually like to start with HB, which I think of kind of uh, as zero on a scale, and that's normally what's found in most school pencils and what most people are kind of used to. Now, from there, we have the H side, which the numbers start going up, and the further it gets away from zero, or HB, the harder your lead is going to be. Now, these are great for much lighter areas of your drawings uh, because the graphite does not want to lay down as much as something that is a little bit softer. Now, on the opposite side of HB are the B pencils. Now, just like H, the numbers go up, but with B, the further you go up, the softer your leads are gonna be. Uh, now, this allows for the graphite to transfer down uh, because it's much softer, and so you get those darker values. Now, for those of you who are wondering, H stands for hard, B stands for black, and HB stands for hard black. So if you're a beginner, it will be a lot easier for you to control those letter values with H pencils, but I'm only using the 12B in this drawing, so I'm gonna have to lightly shade and use my blending tools to achieve those values. The pencils do come in a box of 12, but they are not sharpened, so we are gonna need a good pencil sharpener. There are several out there, so I have my two favorites here with me today. The Coombe Ellipse is great for the basic everyday sharpen, and that sharp point allows me to get nice sharp lines, uh, which is great for hair or eyelashes. Then I have the Coombe Masterpiece two hole sharpener. And as you can see, it has two holes, but it is not for two different size pencils. The first hole will get your lead to this point because it actually sharpens the wood, but not the lead. Now that makes the lead stick out quite a bit, but it's not sharp at all. That's where the second hole comes in. It only sharpens the lead to a nice point. Now, because I have the longer piece of lead sticking out to a sharp point, I can get those much softer values in larger areas without not holding it like a normal pencil, but using kind of an overhand technique and using the side of that lead instead of the point. So let's get started on this drawing. We're going to fast forward my actual drawing a bit for you guys because this medium does take a lot of time to finesse and kind of layer down. Now, unlike painting where I try to address the whole piece in its entirety, with my pencil drawings, I usually pick a point to start and kind of work my way out from there. Not that I won't go back and forth to address value issues as I see them, but this is how I work for the most part with pencils. Now, for me as a right-handed person, I like to start somewhere on the kind of left-ish side of the drawing. I know I'm gonna block in his hair all in one go, so I figured the eye would be a really good place to start. Uh, now you might be asking why does it matter which hand you draw with? Well, if I were to start on the right hand side and work my way left, there's a much higher chance of me smudging my work that I've already laid down. So I can avoid that by going left to right or also by laying down a piece of paper for my hand to rest on, which you will see me do throughout the entire process. Uh, now I'm going to continue to work and get a good layer down, finding the form, and all of those different values that represent his whole picture. Uh, now, I usually like to start with a kind of a lighter middle value and then build my darker areas up from there. Now, that includes those highlighting areas because I will address that after the next step. Uh, so once I do have those values down, I bring in my blending tools to smooth out all of my marks and get the transitions exactly the way that I want them. There are several ways to blend graphite out, so let's talk about that. The first way is to use a blending stump, which also can be called a tortillion. Uh, now this is a great little tool that allows you to kind of dry smudge the graphite around and usually makes your values go darker, especially when you get a buildup of graphite on the tortillion. 
Uh, now, on occasion, I will actually use a dirty tortillon and lightly smudge in a lighter value rather than even grabbing my pencil. Now, the second option for blending is water. And I know that doesn't sound right because even if your pencil isn't technically a water soluble graphite, it can still be smoothed out with water. Uh, it still likes to move around a little bit. Now, it is important to note that this technique works really great on this Soho Bristol, but not so much on sketch or drawing paper uh, because those thinner papers will warp and buckle with the addition of water where the Bristol can handle it no problem. So the last blending technique I wanted to show you it uses the colorless blenders. Now this works great just like you would with a normal colored pencil and it smooths out your transitions without adding any color or haziness. So it was so perfect for the areas around his eye that I needed to blend with kind of a sharp point. Uh, now it is important to know that this technique will again darken your values, but it is also not the easiest to erase out once it's been burnished into your paper. I knew his eye didn't need to be erased out, so it was perfect. So now that you understand how I kind of smooth out my scribbles, we need to talk about those highlighted areas that I covered up with too much graphite. Erasers! Erasers are such an invaluable tool when it comes to drawing, and there are several different types out there. My absolute favorite is the kneaded eraser. Uh, this is essentially a squishy lump of eraser, and it's what I like to think of as my light eraser. So I use it to pick up only a small amount of graphite, allowing me to get those lighter values without having to scrub my paper. I also love that it can squish into just about any shape needed for the exact area that I'm working on. Now, the kneaded eraser is not what I would grab if I'm trying to pop in a really bright highlight. This is where my 4-in-1 vanish eraser comes in. This thing really does actually make graphite just vanish. And it is what I grab when I need larger areas and chunks of highlights or when I need a super clean hard edge, just like I hear where I erased out the highlights in his shirt. Now, the other eraser that allows me to achieve that same hard edge erasing, but in super tiny areas, is the Accurate Electric Eraser. Now, this has two different size eraser inserts, so I was able to easily erase out the highlights in his hair and his beard. So that was basic drawing techniques. I hope you guys enjoyed the process and are now inspired to go get your own pencils and go get creative.